Hi, Stephen Fortner here for Keyboard Magazine. I am here with Grammy award-winning keyboardist and film composer, Michael Boddicker. Stephen, thanks for having me. Award-winning editor, master blogger, Stephen Fortner. I'm, I'm sure if I've won any awards, but I, I might have forgotten. With I'm Keyboard sure. Magazine? All that work you did? That's masterful. That's great. Well, thank you. Whoa. Thank you very much for saying. We are sitting here in, in front of uh, Michael's uh, very famous Moog Modular synth, which was used on Michael oh, Jackson's good. Thriller and hey. a million other things. All of them. Yep. And, yep. Uh, so we're doing our yearly tradition, which is wrapping up the stuff we thought was cool at the uh, NAM show. This is 2019 Winter NAM, which just got done. I think you'll be surprised. And uh, I'll start. Good, please. Um, this was the first year the uh, Nonlinear Lab C15 synthesizer uh, was shown at NAM. It's been shown uh, in Europe at shows like Superbooth, but uh, not here in the States. And uh, if you've seen this thing, it kind of reminds of a uh, Synclavier too. It's got a, a knob and a bunch of buttons on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it uses uh, additive, FM, uh, different types of phase distortion synthesis, and physical modeling. Uh, its base waveform components are sine waves only. So it's strictly using a lot of synthesis power, a lot of algorithms. It's a brainchild of Stefan Schmidt, who was one of the co-founders of Native Instruments. It's about four grand, it's a high-end machine. It had a lot of inputs on the back. You could yeah. control a lot of parameters, yeah. right? Um, no MIDI, however. It's designed to be played in real time only. So if you want to oh my word. capture That's, a track, you record audio. That is a, a very interesting approach to life, that one. <laughs> Speaking of synclaviers, uh, pocket synclavier. If you don't want to spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you can get this free app. This free app, synclavier pocket, power in the palm of your hand. I listened to it; it sounded great. Yeah, and there's a knob that comes with it. Oh, there is. This is very you cool. Get a hardware on the knob that isn't free. I don't. Know. And you can but, apply the knob to other things. You can use it as a MIDI size. controller, a USB MIDI controller. It's the same size, weight, and materials as a synclavier knob. That's right. It so, looks really cool. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to run down a bunch of Yamaha stuff because Yamaha had, had several oh, oh my cool word. new things. Oh, my word. Uh, first among them would be the CP73 and CP88 new stage pianos. Yep. Did you get to check these things out? I got to look at them. There was somebody playing away on it, would not move. So it I, me. Uh, no, it wasn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was on one for like half an hour. machines have a piano, electric piano, and sub, which is like pads and organs and things. Three sections, you can toggle them on and off uh, separately. You can octave shift and transpose them separately. Splits and layers are super easy to do. I sat down with the thing, having not touched it before, and just going, oh, where would I be if I were a blah, blah, blah button? I was just able to figure it out immediately. That's the idea behind these but things. That's Yamaha anyway. Really good. Yamaha is really intuitive that way. They, they, their stuff is always well laid out. So did you see the keytar, the, the, the sonogenic keytar. The, the Yamaha keytar? Yes, the how SHS I, 500. How did I miss that? No, okay. There was an artist named Plasmic, who was a very personable young lady with giant pink hair, huh. playing it. Um, great artist, by the way, Plasmic. Um, and it is a, it's a keytar, three octave keytar, has the same keybed on it as the reface line of compact synthesizers. And the idea behind this thing, it's about 299 bucks, and it works with an iPad app, 
uh, which can analyze songs in your music library, uh, the music library you already have on your mobile device. So it has this mode called Chord Tracker. Mm. Um, and uh, in Chord Tracker, when it gives you a chord chart, there's a little uh, display, a uh, keyboard display on the bottom that tells you what notes to play. But there's a sub-mode of Chord Tracker where you can't play a wrong note. So it will automatically harmonize for you. And one of, one of the gimmicks they had was they showed a promo video of a dog playing it and, and, and sounding good. But um, what, what struck me as of serious value about it was that that can remove the fear factor of initially playing. Oh. And as you realize you can't play a wrong note, then you start to look at the display. You remove that fear of, of playing a clam in front of your friends or family. Huh. And you start to look at the display and you go, okay, maybe I'll take that mode off. I'll take the training wheels off and I'll start to play the right notes. So I think it's a really interesting kind of gateway drug into <laughs> playing and not, and not just a fun toy, although it sort of is a fun toy. Yeah, Cubase is becoming a really powerful composer's tool. It is really reputation going up, up, up in the world of DAWs. Uh, but they have not enjoyed a similarly sterling reputation for audio interfaces, but the Steinberg AXR4 interface aims to change that. Well, they, this thing? they've been really pushing. They, they have a new yeah. Hans Zimmer library, yeah. and uh, Cubase is used by very key composers like Hans. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. a, that's a... That's his, that's his go-to. Oh, boy. But and this, he, this, he makes it sound like a million bucks. Or, or is it actually 28 billion bucks is actually what it sounds like. I think that's what he's grossed. That those, 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 those films have grossed already. Oh yeah, I mean, it's incredible. Uh, but the, the, the interface, a hardware Steinberg interface, it is, it is high end, it has very high quality mic preamps, it has an emulation of Rupert Neve's silk circuit. Wow. It has Rupert Neve transformers, I wow. believe. Wow. Um, and it goes up to 32-bit, 384K resolution. Wow. Like what else do you got? You have, you have oh. a thing for, for cable management. That oh, you know. that's my favorite. Okay, best in yeah. show. I got it here in my pile here somewhere. Here it is, the Cable Wrangler. The Cable Wrangler, uh, and what it does, it's like a plastic hanger that was a nice grip on the top. And here there are 12 sockets, and the sockets have a ball, and each ball has a bungee cord on it, and you wrap it around your cable, and you can pick up and easily move 12 mic cables and keep them all nicely organized. And it was, again, I, I think it was $29. And uh, it, it was just terrific. It comes in multiple colors. I bought mine in black just so it would go away on the floor of the studio. But I, I end up doing that a lot when I have to mic up a drum quickly, just go in there and put them all on my arm. And this way I'll have them all kind of preloaded. It's very cool. Yeah, well, I loved it. Now you're picking up something when I interrupted you. So. Oh, I was going to talk about my Lounsbury Tall and Fat, which is supposed to recreate, take my my little 1956 Fruitwood B3 that I have in there with a tall boy, a 122 and a 145, and make it sound like an A100. And <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I, I bought it immediately. I thought, wow, the, it, it, they had it through a Viscount, and it sounded really good. It's got, it's got a nice fat warmth to it, and uh, I'm gonna check it out. I'll put it on my X5. My XK5. This is the mellower of the pedals, the less, the less extreme of the overdrives that Greg makes, I believe. Greg Lounsbury makes. Oh. Yeah, there's others. And yeah, there's, there's a have, stereo version out I just out heard well. this one yeah. and bought it. So that was it. That was enough for me. I didn't even go any further. I just went, this is it. I'm going to put on my XK5 and I'm going to love it. So our friend Suit and Tie Guy at STG ah! Sound Labs. Our yeah. Yes, oh, I guy. love him. Mr. Knobcon. Yes, he's, he puts on the Knobcon synth convention in Chicagoland. He has released uh, his first VCO. Uh, he's made modules for a while, but this, this oscillator that he makes, I don't know if it's first VCO, but this oscillator is its Eurorack format, and it's a, v it's a genuine voltage-controlled oscillator, but with digital pitch governance ah. and stabilization. It has like a uh, uh, control where you can like, uh, what do I want to say, uh, warble it up a little bit where it doesn't yeah. track as perfectly as a digital oscillator what would, right? right? You're going to show the picture But it can of that. track as, yeah, I am. And, and, and um, it can track as stably as you want. A cool thing is that in wide mode, the detune knob can sweep five octaves. Ah. Uh -huh. um, and there's a semitones knob, 
which uh, you know gives you an octave of, of range, and it's a little wider. The, the, the knob scaling is a little wider, a little more degrees in the circle, right around the perfect perfect fifth. Ah. Oh. So if you want to find that fifth, it's a little easier to do. Oh, you won't cool. lose it as quickly. He, he, he's, yeah. Eric is terrific. Yeah. Suit and tie guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm going for all the high-end stuff here. These are glow-in-the-dark fader tops. So the little knob sliders for your faders. The, my idea for them was to put braille on the side. I thought that would make it really cool. And, and they're also uh, coming out with a version where they label them. So you can have things like in my studio, I have 28 faders and I can have five one of dialogue, five one of effects, five one of backgrounds and five one of music. And then I have four master faders. And I could have glow in the dark so I can keep the light over the engineer turned way down while we're watching the movie and we'd still be able to see the faders easily. So that was cool. That's from Get a Grip on Your Mix, Profade, profader.com. Korg. Uh, ah, Korg. yeah. Oh, I love those wooden keytars. I just, oh, you know, yeah. I loved were. them. I, they, they were beautiful and, and they felt great. There's nothing like a wood keytar. And also from Korg is the Minilog XD, Minilog XD which is a upgraded version of their four voice uh, mini log, which is a little mini keys, analog, real analog synthesizer, very powerful for its price class. But what they did was they added a third oscillator, which they call the digital multi-engine. So you can get things like single cycle waveforms and samples and stuff that has transients and articulations and motion in it that the analog oscillators really don't do. The Prolog, the larger version, also has this, but they brought that trick to the mini log now in the mini log XD. And it can go places purely analog synths can't go. This was cool. This is the Nori Keytars. Nori. Uh, I've thought about that. I've had this idea, and they somebody did it before I got so to it's, it. So it's, it's uh, flipped. Um, yep, you can play both hands. You can play one hand this way, one hand that way. Speaking of keyboard controllers, I just wanted to mention really quick the Akai Rode 88. Uh, everyone was talking about the Force workstation, which is kind of like a, a standalone music production workstation that incorporates a surface that's very much like Ableton Push, uh, which of course Akai partnered with Ableton on, on, on making. But this Great. is kind of like Ableton Great in a box. Uh, as a keyboard player, what really grabbed me though was the Rode 88, which is a 88 key weighted keyboard controller with aftertouch, thank you, um, that folds up into its own road case. That's um, cool. And it just has, it's, it's for software based musicians. So it has plenty of flat real estate on top. So you can put things like laptops and desktop synths on top of it. Okay, talking about cool keyboards, did you see the new Casio? That new Casio that they brought out, it looks like it's wearing a tuxedo. It's all solid black uh -huh. and, and it's got, you got it on your list, it's got the whole glass top. So when you turn it on, then you see what's written underneath the glass top but it looks like a million bucks. And what, what sparked that was the fact that I think it weighs 24 pounds. Yes, there's two of those uh, in that line. It's the new Privia's. Uh -huh. It's the Privia PX uh, S3000 and it's a little sibling, the S1000. Great and sound. It's, it's, yeah, it's this totally flush. Uh, so if you think about a control panel from Star Trek The Next Generation, right, where it's dark and flush when it's off and then underlit when it's on, or uh, maybe some of the cooler designs of Bang & Olufsen stereos from the 80s. Oh yeah, it's exactly. It's a lot like exactly. that. And the thing, it sounds so good. The keyboard is feels really, really responsive. Yes, yeah, um, they've, been, they've been doing great with that. Yeah. I just thought that Q parts, all these custom guitar knobs, those pots will fit on our synthesizers and they just made such a beautiful array of, of different knobs and uh, I, Whenever you lose one, why not get a cool one to replace it? From Krumar. And Krumar is now Guido Sconamilio, who you might remember from GSI Soundware and such uh, uh, software emulations of vintage keys as Organized Trio, VV3, Mr. Ray, and Mr. Tramp. Surprisingly fantastic keyboard, right? The Krumar 7 is what I'm talking about. It looks like a, a vintage electric piano. It has glowing knobs that flash things uh, or change colors to show you depth or rate of the parameter they're controlling, such as uh, the depth or rate of a phaser. It, it, it has fantastic, utterly fantastic electric piano sounds in it. There's a new five gig uh, Italian grand 
piano for it. The real value proposition of it, though, uh, other than the flat top, which you can put another synth on very easily, the real big deal is the, the action in it, which is a fatire action, is so well coupled and voiced to the sound in it. All right. Go, go, go. That's two of us. I hear the sound. Oh, that's the sound right there. Amp sound. I mean, it's, it's, it ain't right how right that shit is. It's just ain't right. That's how we got on it? Yeah, yeah it is. So it's it's six o'clock. Yeah, it is six o'clock. Uh, IK Multimedia had uh, a few really new cool things out. Uh, IK always impressed me because they were kind of first out of the gate with serious musical accessories for mobile devices like iPhones. You know, several iPhone generations ago, they were making, you pretty much went to IK if you wanted uh, to make music. Oh, on your mobile device. Yeah, they make great stuff. And they, they've kind of gone up market. Uh, they have the new MTM monitors, which are uh, about three forty nine dollars each, six ninety nine dollars a pair. And uh, they are very loud, uh, dual woofer, tweeter in the middle uh, monitors that are, that are desktop, very tiny, very clear, very good sounding. Wow. This is, I just, I, I went by this booth and I wasn't really going to stop. This is part of the music marketing crew out of Ray Williams Company out of Toronto. Yeah, we know Ray, yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, the Ample Sound, Ample Sound. They had, he was just playing and the guitar was so expressive and he has all these Chinese series, uh, Chinese instruments as well. It sounded so good that I had to stop and just take a breath and listen to it. It was great. Uh, we mentioned Arturia a minute ago. I wanted to make sure not to forget the Arturia Micro Freak. Oh, did you see that oh, thing? Oh, it was beautiful. That little gold copper keyboard. I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. That, it's that a throwback was... to touch plate keyboards of fantastic yesteryear. It's a yeah. small, affordable analog synth that's designed for experimental music, and it is just wild and beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Second best in show. Second, second best, best second in best show. Best, best next to the Cable Wrangler. This just knocked me out. I listened to it. It's called the V Sound, uh, and it is from Sing Signal Wizard Systems. SignalWizardSystems.com, the V Sound. This is an IR of an actual Stradivarius violin, a Guarnerius violin, another Guarnerius violin, and a couple others uh, that are ir in there. You can see he's in an anechoic chamber sampling these. And the deal was that he took and he was using it, he was selling it because he wants to put piezo pickup electric violins through it and recreate the body sound. Well, <laughs> I want to put my synthesizer through it and, and use it. Well, to a synth with a violin body oh, sounds like. Oh man, this, yeah, this is, this is great. And it was like $399. This is really cool. This is really cool. This is the pyramid speaker, and it resonates uh, 360 degrees. So it's, it's for a guy like me, I'm always complaining, I'm always trying to get people to build like the, uh, the Aspen Pittman, the Pittman and Associates, Aspen and Associates, the Space Station XL, okay. which I absolutely love. It's, it, it goes forward and to the side, and you get a 3D, sound out of it. It's mid-side applied to a speaker. That's what it is. It, it's exactly the it's inverse mid-side. Mid in, right. In so the mono stuff comes out the front and all the stereo stuff comes out the side, but it comes out the side mono. Left and right are combined together and they go out the sides and they're 180 degrees out and it just fills the room with a, a, an oral image, a 3D type image. But this, you know, that still is side and front oriented. I keep get, trying to get guys to make a 360 speaker, and this guy did. He has, it's called the Pyramid, and uh, the Owned, uh, which is like a, a, a soundboard shape that you put on your rack, and this is a, it emanates from all sides of the speaker. So this was cool, called Second Sound. Uh, there were a couple companies that were doing this that there's uh, been a major advancement and Roland talks about theirs as well. There's a major advancement in pitch to voltage conversion. 
hmm. to the point where Roland says, we don't even need to put the six uh, piezo pickup on a guitar anymore to have it go out. Like the old, the old pickup that Pat Metheny had for his guitar synth. And right. You don't, you don't, uh, yeah. Roland says they don't even need to do that anymore. This was the same thing. This, this lady had a microphone and uh, a penny whistle and she was playing recorder and penny whistle, and this device was tracking it perfectly and doubling it with the MIDI sound, d going down an octave with another sound, and even with all the clapping and yelling and everything else going on at NAMM, it was tracking perfectly just through a microphone. It was pretty awesome. This is called the Muso Mirror, and you're gonna see them at Synthplex. Synthplex is happening March 28th through 31st at the Los Angeles Burbank Marriott Convention Center. It's a synthesizer convention. Thomas Dolby is now playing the banquet. Mark Isham with Vinnie Caliuta is playing. 41 different modular acts playing. There are over 100 vendors now. I'll be there with Bill's on covering uh, it. Uh, Steve is going to be there. He's got a big surprise for us that, that is going to be unveiled there. <laughs> and, tuck, tuck. And, and this is a plexiglass, really high quality mirror. He, he meant for it to be for a guitar student so it could attach to the music stand and you could watch your hand without having to go like this. So you would look at the mirror, really high quality. I bought four of them because I'm gonna put them here and here on mic stands and uh, you're gonna be able to see the DJ who's going like this, what they're actually doing with their hands behind. You'll be able to see the keyboard player playing. We'll also have cameras over, overhead, but I just thought it would be fun to do that. I bought them immediately there. I think they're 48 bucks each. Oh. And, they, and again, they're really high quality. I talked to the owner, the inventor, and he's going to consider making a larger one for overhead keyboard players. And the, the thing that, that uh, he wasn't marketing that I thought he should is he should, if you have a cymbal here and your bass player's there, you can put one of these down there on a mic stand and you can still have head nod communication with the bass player. And come see him at Synthplex. Synthplex, uh, March 28th through 31st at the Marriott Convention Center you can, in you Burbank. You can basically, you can almost get out of, walk out of Burbank Airport and walk across the street. Oh, you can. You don't even have to there. take the shuttle. It's a half yeah. a block from where yeah. they drop your bags. It's great. It's going to be four days of great fun and food, but great music and all kinds of, there are, I, I, I can't even remember, was it four or six? different instruments that are going to be previewed there. They, they weren't going to do it at NAMM. They're doing it at Synthplex. They're saving it for us. Come and join yep. us.